child, y'all loving Mary Huntsville, folks. <laughs> y'all fans then lost y'all mandula oblongata child because not y'all trying to drag my good Scorpio sister by her number 27 her because she on TikTok selling out. Why are y'all trying to make Mel and Stormy compete with each other? You can't compete when there's no competition. Both of y'all can get rich. We're going to talk about y'all crazy, crazy ass love and marriage Huntsville fans. <laughs> and speaking of getting drug, child, so JT dropped her mixtape, CD Cinderella. And apparently, prison pants, not prison pants. <laughs> apparently, she was dragging Cardi, dragging Suki, and who else they said she drug glow a little bit in her album. So, not you uh, dropped your first solo album, child. And you dragging everybody else, a non-rapping girl. Anyway, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. And then, so she had like a, the making of CD Cinderella. And y'all know Armand was in a damn video. Girl, not Armand ended up dragging Milagro and Tasha. And when I tell you, he drugged them. He drugged them to death. <laughs> we going to talk about that. Because I... This may be a little bit controversial, though. Did y'all hear about Miss Netta talking about how she don't fuck with black women and black bitches and da-da-da-da? And then she just recently retracted her statement? Or, or members of the LGBTQ, when you get mad, is it okay to call me a black bitch? Now, because what if I call you something? I don't know, but we're going to talk about it, y'all. So, welcome back. I know I ain't come, um... Holla at y'all yesterday on my lunch, but girl, I wanted to go get my nails done. <laughs> I wanted to get ready for the weekend. But thank y'all for tuning in. Thank you for commenting, liking, subscribing to my videos. I appreciate it. I hope you got you a little something. It's Friday. If you even at work, girl, go and get you a margarita. <laughs> get you a fucking margarita. Exactly. But let's talk about this shit. So first, we're going to talk about the JT stuff. Then we'll talk about Mel and Stormy and their drama. Well, now, nah, let's talk about the Love and Marriage Huntsville stuff. Then we'll talk about the JT, Miss Netta, Ormond, them, Cardi, dragging the shit out of Joe Budden. Girl, Cardi said, so Joe Budden was uh, clowning Cardi. That month, she said that, nigga, you used to be in the strip club getting lap dances, coked out, hiding giraffe coochie cat. Girl, I guess. <laughs> so I'm going to put the timestamps in the comments. So whatever you don't want to hear about, just look down in the comments child and fast forward to what you want to what you want to listen to what what's in your mouth so anyway so i was bored the other night because i had woke up at like four o'clock in the morning i went to bed early woke up at four o'clock in the morning so i get on facebook which i'm rarely on facebook and in them love and marriage huntsville groups they be zogging melody out and they dog marceau and martell out but this particular group they mail it you know is trying to use god to peddle her project you know peddle her products and she just got on tiktok because stormy is on tiktok and da -da. baby it's marketing what are you talking about if i'm selling a product and i see that a lot of people are getting you know a lot of sales and revenue is increasing on this platform why wouldn't i get on this platform that's just like when Instagram first started, somebody noticed, oh, well, you can get a lot of, you know, a lot of followers and make money on Instagram. And then people start complaining like, oh, you just following after her. Bitch, I'm following after the rest of the billion people <laughs> that are on this social media platform so we can make some money. I should have left that open. Anyway, so I can't believe that they was... Um, on there doing all that even though i don't care for stormy that much anymore i'm kind of i'm 50 50 with stormy let both of them make their money shit when i got on there because i went to the tick to the top and i got on i was like damn i need to open my boutique back up these girls making all of this money on tiktok i need to open my boutique back up anyway so since i was on her child i went ahead and got me some of that vegan uh lip gloss that mel was seven uh selling one of the little shirts that say seventh um seventh avenue you know and then on the back it say not like us and i bought me um some of the body scrub too like the little travel with all six so i could decide which one i want so 
when I tell y'all I ordered it, I ordered it yesterday. And I inboxed Mill because I ain't had no plus sizes. Plus size was sold out. And she inboxed me right back and was like, you know, it's going to restock today. Check later on today. And sure enough, I checked later on and um, it was restocked. So I went ahead and bought that. I already got my order confirmation saying it was shipped, da-da-da-da. So she does work fast. It was good. So once I get my stuff, I'll unbox and tell y'all how it um how it turned out, how I like it and stuff. And since I was doing that, so when I was on TikTok, I went on Destiny TikTok. And Destiny had uh, this new post called Dest My Destimony. And I thought, it, even though I know y'all be calling her Dirty, Dusty, Crusty, Musty, Dusty, Destiny... <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all be down in the comments talking about this girl. When she get on my motherfucking nerves too. However, I did like the little testimony thing that she did. And she talked about her grandma raising her. So apparently her mama was absent. And how, you know, it was a cute little, a cute little something. If she could stick with something, like the little Mental Mondays, you know what I'm saying, podcast, or the little testimony thing. I thought that was a cute little play on words and allow people to get to know her. Maybe you'll become more likable in a motherfucker. You will last on the show. Anyway, so in the interest of me supporting the black girlies, because I ain't like all the hate that was going around in that group. That group scared me. It scared me straight. And y'all know I talk cash shit. Anyway, child, so since I had bought Mel stuff, I decided to go on, mosey on to Destiny website, child, and give her a chance. <laughs> her candles were sold out. The black and the white were sold out. But I did order the Big D Body Mist. Now, I got to order confirmation, but I'm not sure how long it's going to take to ship or whatever. But I tell y'all, once I get my Big D uh, Body Mist by Destiny, and then I let y'all know how it's smelling what the tea is. So, even though a lot of y'all don't give a fuck about Destiny dumbass, and I have not been a Destiny supporter either, if I get the fucking body mist and the body mist smell good, and I tell y'all that body mist smell good, you could call her a dirty dumb bitch. <laughs> but help that child out, exactly. Anyway, so that's all that was going on. While I was over there, I started looking at Trish shit and, um... And on the Facebook group, Trish is really pretty. I don't like the way she be on the show, but on her Facebook page and stuff and her pictures, she is beautiful. She is fucking beautiful. She really is. And her and Kim look so happy and carefree and stuff like that. So y'all know I found uh, Marquez. <laughs> I found his Facebook. Girl, this man on there talking about, of course, he want to start a podcast called Breaking Bread. He seemed like the podcast type, don't he? Just deadbeat in real life, broke asking your ex-wife to go half on a $400 divorce filing fee. Child, and then he was making some type of candies or something. But I noticed in the kids' graduation pictures, his ass was in some of the pictures with Ken, and he looked like the outsider, and he looked stupid. So you ain't beefing and feel no type of way with Ken like that, not for real, because in real time, you was at the graduation with him, and y'all might have been playing nice for the kids, but you ain't going to say nothing to that man. <laughs> Ken will bench press your ass. They got one video on there when uh, Trisha is real, literally like, on his hands or whatever like sitting on his hands and he like ben ken is bench pressing trisha they are cute they are cute internet couple i guess it's just not translating to our tv screen do y'all want to see them back for another season i don't know i don't know i think they might be likable for real and maybe the show just not shedding a good light on them. Just like Sunny said, we ain't seen none of her flipping homes, you know, putting real estate out there. We ain't seen none of that. I don't know. Speaking of Sunny, y'all Sunny Delights better tell y'all girl she better get on the tick to the talk because Mel out there selling out <laughs> for the last three days and Stormy still making millions. She misses TikTok, so I don't know. But that was crazy. Loving Marriage Huntsville fans, now I see why when I used to be watching all the reviews and stuff, a lot of YouTubers would stop 
review it, they be like, fuck, I'm not reviewing Love and Marriage Huntsville no more. Da, da, da. Cause y'all be talking reckless and it'd be a lot of people coming talking reckless. And like I said, you can drop down and disagree with me or say what you gotta say. But the minute you start cursing at me, bitch, I'm blocking your motherfucking ass. Cause this ain't that. <laughs> I'm just here for the last so I can snickle and giggle, bitch. Exactly. You think I'm finna girl, you better go get you some zip. Anyway, <laughs> disregard that last comment. So let's talk about uh JT. So I told y'all. So JT um she released her mixtape last night. It's called City Cinderella. It was highly anticipated since she broke up. Um since the CD girls broke up because you know they always said that JT was the best rapper she should go uh solo and stuff so now you're solo now you out here on your own and then everybody was hyped anyway because okay you know was a popular song so the two standout songs she just released the video too to 90s baby I think that's a cute little song the video kind of remind me of um Alicia Keys you don't know my name like that diner old school type of deal and she got this other song called Uncle Al, which um, it's a it's a cute little song. It's popping. It's a sample of that song. Um, Boy, I really wanna think and play that little game we play. You go, y'all remember that exactly. If y'all don't, maybe you too young or I can't sing. Either way, bitch, go listen to the song. So those are the two songs that everybody really talking about. But I listen to the album. If y'all listen to JT uh, mixtape, tell me what y'all think. Tell me what y'all favorite songs are. And tell me if y'all think her mixtape live up to all the hype that been going on, you know, about her. First of all, I, I never fell into the JT hype. JT hype. I always liked her verses, but I don't like her attitude. She's not the type of bitch that I would hang out with. She just always came off stank and stuck up. And it's just like... How you gonna be stuck up and you was in you was in jail? Your nickname was prison pants. What are we talking about? Exactly. So I just I didn't like her, you know. I, I never liked her demeanor and her attitude and shit. But this is what I don't like. Ever since JT been up under Nikki, you know, they've been calling her Nikki Lapdog. I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that's what they was calling her Nikki Lapdog and shit. I feel like people be getting close to Nikki because they know the fans going to support her. A lot of bloggers do that. They pander to Nikki because they know they're going to get the views from the Barb's, um, Ice Spice, Koi Ray, just a few artists that have pandered to Nikki or they was truly her friends, whatever they did, just so they can get the support of the Barb's. And I feel like JT, she's getting that type of support and that type of hype because the same way they be clowning Magnum, and all of the rap girlies, I don't want to hear no sexual stuff. I'm sick of hearing about your coochie and why they keep reusing old songs and da, da, da. I don't hear nobody saying that shit about this JT album. Mind you, it's good, but she doing the same thing as the old girls. Meg, uh, Meg on her single, she used the booty me down beat. They was clowning her. Oh, she reusing old songs. That's why I sound familiar. JT doing the same thing on CD Cinderella. I just told y'all that Uncle Al song is a sample with basically the same hook she's still talking about coochie getting money do your man pay for everything so why is it that jt is getting a pass but all the other rap girlies y'all got y'all got smoke for them they all really talking about the same thing if it ain't a dead loaf bring back dead loaf where is somebody go find dead loaf because that's i want to hear about bitches ain't got goals Exactly. How you get pregnant and still live with your mama? Make that nigga. Y'all, they used to sleep on Dead Slow, but she provided us with some variety. And I just didn't, everybody just was going up for JT and her album. Mind you, it's a good album, but she doing the same thing the rest of the girl, girlies doing. They said she was shading Glow and Suki, which she was shading a lot of people on the album. But low key, you doing the same thing, Poo Poo? <laughs> you just your bars and your metaphors just hit a little harder but you still talking about coochie niggas and money anyway so they was also talking about how she shaded uh cardi on the album so she got a verse where she say i was rocking gucci alligator bags when you was laying on your back uh putting bottles up your ass 
basically referencing when Cardi was a stripper. And it was like, so Milagro allegedly like put out a video where a girl was like sticking a bottle up her stuff and they were saying it was Cardi and shit. But that was another thing. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but with my artists, I have to like your personality. I have to feed into the person so I can believe the lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how some people be like, I can separate the artist from the music. I can't. Like, cause if I'm into your music, kind of like the Kendrick and Drake shit, now I feel some type of way cause we see what your character is like. And now I feel like you corny. So I don't really feel your, I don't feel your lyrics like that. You know what I'm saying? But so with JT, like I was rocking Gucci alligator bags. Like you was better than her because Cardi was out here stripping, but bitch, you was stealing Gucci alligator bags. And that's why you got put in jail. So let's not act like you was better than Cardi. Like, it's not, and y'all know, I just went in on Cardi when I thought she was shading me. But let's not act like, like, let's be real, bitch. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> if y'all heard, bitch, I'm finna be real. I don't give a fuck about none of that, bitch. How you go shade me? Because I was allegedly putting coochie, putting bottles up my, trying to stack some paper for my career. And Wait, you child, so she was also um shading Cardi's fashion because you know they've been beefing back and forth and people been comparing they looks like they've been wearing like similar outfits and stuff. So she was like, You wore that in 2000. So JT was like, You wore that in 2019, it's 2024, ho, or some shit. And I'm like, That ain't a drag, that just show bitch, you copied off me and you late. <laughs> you just late with your shit, bitch, and you still copied off of me. So I don't know if that was necessarily a drag. And one thing they can never do is come for Cardi and her fashions. Cause Cardi is washing every, Cardi is washing every rap girl in the fashion department. Her, Colin, her stylist Colin, don't miss at all. Even if you don't like the songs, she eat down every video. She, she eat, it is what it is. You can't shade, you know, Cardi on that. So, I thought that was a little, I don't know. Tell me what y'all think about the album. Tell me if y'all think Cardi should reply to JT shading her all over the album or whatever. And if y'all gonna listen to it and what's y'all favorite songs. Child, so also JT mentioned Cardi and her non-rapping ass. Let's segue to, to Joe Button. Joe Button was on his podcast basically talking about when Cardi was going to release her project. Uh, Offset, he probably sick of her by now. He want her to go out on the road and do some work. Yada, yada, yada. He was just dragging Cardi per usual. So Cardi drug his ass. Cardi went... <laughs> <laughs> Cardi drugged the shit out of Joe Budden. But this my whole thing, like back to what G JT said about non-rapping ass. So you use your debut solo project to talk about a non-rapping ass bitch. And Joe Budden, if y'all if y'all be calling like Cardi, like, oh, she got a ghostwriter, she can't rap, she ain't released the album in six years. If that's the case, then why y'all ain't forgot about her? Why is she constantly mentioned in the top two? Granted, I want I want another Cardi album. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not fucked up about it. I take your singles, which the singles are like hit or miss or whatever. But it's like, why are y'all panini pressed about this girl releasing an album if one, you say she can't rap or two, you say she got writers and shit. Then why is you so pressed, ho? And that go for uh JT and that go for Joe Button. Anyway, child, so... Cardi got on her and she was like, first of all, ho. <laughs> first of all, ho, that ho they call Joe. <laughs> so Joe the ho got dragged, got drugged by Cardi. She was basically like, motherfucker, why is you all up in my cat? You always talking about my marriage, my relationship. You always worried about my, you know, everything or whatever. She was basically calling him a cloud chaser. She wanted to know why he kept picking on her and shit. And Joe do put his he do put his foot on certain people neck. He can be un... Sometimes he can be unbiased and, you know, sometimes he can be an asshole to everybody, but I do feel like he put a little e extra pressure on certain people. Kind of like Drake, like Cardi. So, basically, she was saying, bitch, you ain't... The reason why you doing all this is because you pandering to Nicki. Because you got that interview with Nicki. Because, you know, when Nicki album came out... Joe finally got his interview with Nicki Minaj. I'm sure it did tons of numbers. So she feel like, oh, you didn't pick the side and now you act like you buddy buddy with Nicki and that's why you coming for me. Hence why everybody think that JT is coming for her. 
and let do y'all think that they coming for Cardi because of JT? I mean, because of Nikki. Like, did Nikki put, put JT up to it just like she used to sick Akbar uh big buffalo ass on everybody and Meg? But Meg got y'all hoes up off her. You when they said that Drake uh that Nikki sick Drake on um Meg to start shading her. Meg dropped piss and she got all of y'all up off her ass. Exactly. Joe, she cursed all y'all niggas out. <laughs> so if I'm Cardi, Cardi, you need to just, you might have to drop your own diss track and get these motherfuckers up off you. She also said, Joe, you talking all that shit, ho. You used to be in the strip club that I worked at. <laughs> she said she used to be giving him lap dances and he used to be in that motherfucker high as hell. High as giraffe coochie. She said he had lines for days, bitch. And if y'all know, Joe ain't ever lied about used to, you know, being an addict when he was on loving, uh, loving hip hop New York. Do y'all remember when they was all at Joe house? It was Joe Tahiri, um, his little friends, and what's that girl name? Rocky. And Tahiri was getting ready to beat the dog shit out of Rocky. So allegedly, Joe drug her out the house, and they edited it out. And then, like the next scene when they was at the bar. Joe was going in on Rocky when she was trying to talk to him. And he was like, da, da, girl, it was like veins popping out of his neck. I was like, this motherfucker been hanging around with Bobby Brown because he was hot as a motherfucker. If you ever seen a Coke addict or somebody on Coke, girl, they be so, they be Scarface for real. That's probably why they call it Scarface because they will shoot, girl. Don't, y'all, I hope y'all don't ever talk to nobody who do Coke. <laughs> So I be scared of their ass. Anyway, child. So basically, Cardi was going in on Joe. I wonder if Joe gonna respond, and if so, if Offset, if Offset gonna intervene. Like, so Offset, why you out there fucking with all of them random other hoes? Can you take a breather and defend your wife, like you did when Nikki husband? Like we, so Offset he defended Cardi when Nikki husband was coming at her and them all them little fake goons standing outside looking stupid as fuck <laughs> was coming at Cardi. So I wonder is he gonna step in and say something to Joe Button ass about going at his wife like that? I don't know. Tell me what y'all think. And do y'all think that Cardi was wrong for going out, going off on Joe Button, or do y'all think you know he was just doing his job as a podcaster, or y'all think he on you know? He doing the, he doing Nikki's work because he want to be in her good grace. Guess what? I don't really fuck with Nikki like that, but for some reason, everybody want to be in her good grace. And if that means going at Cardi, Meg, whatever, they don't give a fuck about none of that as long as Nikki like them. I guess, child. Anyway, so. That was all that happened with that. So JT, when her album came out, it rolled out of a lot. Uh, it rolled out a lot of mess too. Did Young Miami repost her album, y'all? I should have went and looked on it. Look at my messy ass. I ain't got shit to do until about three o'clock when I get off. I hope y'all gonna do something this weekend. I'm brunching, pooling, all of that other stuff. Anyway, but did Young Miami sure City Cinderella stuff? I wonder are they still, you know, because they had gotten into it. But then Saucy said that they was all cool again. So I wonder did Miami like repost anything City Cinderella or you know do a little cute little video with one of the songs playing in the background. Mm, I don't know, but we go see. <laughs> anyway, um, and then this last little tidbit. So y'all know when JT had dropped the album on her little uh during her rollout, she like made a little documentary called the making of cd cinderella and at the beginning of it you see armand a clip from armand's show where he's talking about jt so allegedly the girls was throwing shade and getting mad about it or something and if y'all follow armand y'all know lately he's been on his positivity on his channel you know i really I, I actually like the positive videos too outside of the mess but it was like, you know, he was done talking about the celebrities, the gossip and all of the other stuff. So I thought he was, you know, on his like positive journey or he like rebranding to be a more positive person. But I guess he said, y'all hoes got the right one today, baby. Because <laughs> Armand, girl, he went in. First of all, he was on Spaces. He was on his little Spaces or whatever. 
and was dragging a dog shit out of Milagro. Cause you know, they ended, you know, they fell out. Milagro, the girl who hate Meg, who was all up Tory ass during the uh, Tory trial and shit. Girl, he was dragging her. He was dragging Tasha K. He was like, all you bitches just jealous of me. All y'all bitches ain't like me. Da 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 Just clowning, child. Clowning. He was going in on them. Then last night, he, he made a video about Tasha K. Girl, put on that fucking wig. <laughs> Shopping. With her. Like, and everything he had to say about Tasha K was true. We all know Tasha K is, you know, fraudulent or whatever. And then he was talking about Milagro um, in the little spaces or whatever because Milagro allegedly got mad at Ormine because Ormine made up with Cardi and Milagro and Cardi been beefing forever. So I guess she thought that that was fake. You know how you with your friends and y'all might be dogging the bitch out together? And then she end up going back and being friends with her. So the other friend feels some type of way. Or she might feel like you a fake bitch because we was just dogging her out. But it's like, that's a little miserable. <laughs> we ain't got to dog a girl out together just because I don't like her. You know, maybe you think she cool. I don't know. The moral of the story is he was going in on them. And basically he was saying that they are jealous of him all you bitches jealous of me um y'all didn't expect me to go this far y'all will never be on my level y'all hoes live in texas and other places i live here in la you know i rub i'm in the same spaces as stars and even if i'm not in the same spaces with stars i'm in spaces with people you know who got connections to the stars I don't know. And in the comments, some people was like, go or mine, curse, curse they ass out. And then other people was like, uh, you seem a real egotistical and kind of, you know, I don't know. So tell me if y'all listen to that. Tell me what y'all think about it. Tell me, do y'all think that they are just jealous of Armand because, you know, he's getting some notoriety in those types of spaces? and the girl's just jealous of him or do you think that he keep falling out with everybody because he's like star hungry or whatever because that's what Ken Barbie Cardi B best friend was saying about our mind which I fall out with everybody I fall out with a million people if a million people got me fucked up <laughs> that don't necessarily mean that you the problem maybe motherfuckers just used to doing moving funny and acting weird and shit and then I gotta curse all of y'all ass out I'm sorry I don't know, but is he the problem? I don't know. Tell me what y'all think. But when he said, when he was going off or whatever, it kind of, I don't know. So I have a lot of, I've always had like gay male best friends. And one of my best friends who live, so all the three of us went to college together or whatever. One time we was on our way back home from the club and our gay friend was, um, he was fucked up in the back of the car or whatever. And once he get mad, he start calling us bitches and shit. You know, like when you get mad and start cur cursing people out and shit. And I was thinking, dude, is it okay to feel some type of way? Because I feel some type of way about men calling me. Like a man can't call me no bitch. <laughs> like I ain't playing with you in no relationship. I don't, don't curse at me, ho. If you ain't my daddy, don't curse at me. My brothers can't even curse at me. If my brothers curse at me right now, it'll be World War Three don't call me man not calling me out my name so when my gay friends get mad for you to start calling women bitches you bitches or you black bitches and shit like that not saying that Armand called anybody a black bitch but he was calling them bitches and i noticed that when um when gay males get mad they don't have no qualms about calling their girlfriends bitches you know like them bitches and da 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 and is that disrespectful or should it be all good? Because when you get mad at your homegirls, y'all call each other bitches. But do it hit different coming from a male calling you bitches? I don't know if y'all had heard, but Miss Netta was talking about, I don't like y'all bitches. And she was she went on a rant about how she ain't like these bitches in her business and da 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 And everybody took it like oh you calling black women bitches you know what i'm saying because the only people who support you is black women mostly and that's always the situation us black women we supporting <laughs> we supporting our gay favorite you know our, our males our favorite gay males and shit like that 
And then as soon as you get mad, oh, I don't like them black bitches. Not necessarily black bitches, but you may say on them bitches, but it gives black bitches because you talking about the black women that support you and we the ones who supporting your music and your platforms and all of that other